This is not a message of, hey, you can take every lust and every greed and every desire you've ever had and every problem you've ever walked through and just add God to the mix and then all your plans will succeed and everything that you desire will come to pass. No, that is not the message of the gospel. Circumcision was a covenant between God and his people. He came to Abraham at 99 years old and said, Abraham, I'm renewing my covenant with you. I want to make you the father of many nations. And at that point, Abraham had not seen it come to pass. He'd been waiting for decades for God to move. And the Lord said, I'm going to give you children, but it's going to cost you something. And without being graphic or crude, for all Abraham knew, he needed everything in order for things to work. Because this is the first time circumcision was ever mentioned. And he probably wasn't a biology expert. And God said, you want to make that work? You're going to give me some of it. You want to make your life work? You're going to lay it down. You're going to make a sacrifice. Now, praise God for the new covenant. Can I get an amen in God's house? That we don't. Can you imagine? Hey, step one is today. We've got doctors on hand. If you'd like to be a part of the church, we can take care of it in Jesus' name. Free circumcisions for all who join. You laugh, but the early church, read the book of Galatians, that was the problem. Judaizers was coming in like, hey, we're celebrating that you Gentiles are part of the club, but now you get you you got to come have some surgery so you can really be in the club. And Paul, I love Paul, he was like, I wish that they would just cut it all the way off. <laughs> hey, the Bible's offensive. Don't yell at me. It's not, I could have read that chapter and verse. That's what Paul said. The principle is that if we are going to take the step that God has for us, spiritually we must be circumcised. I close with this, Colossians chapter 2 and verse 9. For in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form, and in Christ you have been brought to fullness. In other words, in Christ you live your best life. He is the head over every power and authority, and in him you were circumcised with a circumcision not performed by human hands, amen, for your whole self, ruled by the flesh, was put off when you were circumcised by Christ, having been buried with him in baptism, in which you who were also raised with him through your faith in the working of God, who raised him from the dead. And when you were dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave all of our sins. He canceled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us, condemning us. He took it away, nailing it to the cross, disarming the powers and authorities, making public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. You want to live in victory? You want to have God's promises? You have to understand it can't be your way all the time. God's dream is not to make your dreams come to pass. You want to cross the River Jordan? You want to go into Jericho? God's dream for you is that you would die. To all of your ambition, to all of your dreams, and to all of your desires. So that you can live for the life that God has called you to live. With every head bowed and every eye closed at every campus, as campus pastors are joining me on the stage. You can have victory over Jericho. But it's going to cost you spiritual circumcision. You've got to lay down the life and the dreams that maybe you've been holding on to. And I believe that this service, this moment, is not an accident. God wants to give you victory after victory. He wants to give you the stones that you can collect to build a memorial.